So hey friends, we are not at home, we are in Maine, but ski trip, some ski gear review. Usually I rock with this Alpha Infinity that I reviewed in a previous review, link above if you want to check that out. This has been awesome, however, it usually overheats for me because I run hot. So I want to try a different jacket that was a little bit thinner, and because this is a nicer weather and we should be freezing to death. Uh, I picked up this dope snow Yeti jacket, it's thinner, it's pull over, it's a little bit more casual, less technical, but maybe this will work for those sunnier days and hopefully I'll figure that out today. So let's rock with it and try it out, but let's talk about the jacket itself first. See when it's 50 degrees and nobody's in the parking lot because it's gonna be slushy as eh. Well, it was raining this morning too. Yeah, but this is the perfect time for this jacket because it's, you know, warm weather skiing basically. All y'all Californians, this is probably why you like this brand. This usually doesn't rock in the Northeast, but this is perfect right now. Californians, this is the life. Skiing is great in this weather. I'm still hot. <laughs> <laughs> so today was a sunny day, which is a perfect time to talk about the pros of the dope snow Yeti jacket. This guy beasted today. It was great because it was like 55, super, super warm, like probably overkill for this jacket, but it was still able to deal with everything that was thrown us today. So let me get into that. So first, when we started our ride today, it was rainy. I don't really have my camera on here because I didn't want to like risk it, but um, it rained. This was able to bead off all of that without any sort of soaking in. So it's just nice because it acted like sort of like a rain shell. Didn't have to worry about insulation getting wet. It didn't weigh me down. It really just, kept me dry for those showers in the morning. Then when it warmed up, it was good to have the vents and it was good to have flexible material. You know, for a hotter day, I didn't even need that mid layer and this was able to keep me warm when the wind picked up with that fleece lining. Again, a little bit of, you know, it's not very permeable in terms of the wind, so I was able to deal with that as well. In terms of the materials, it's extremely comfortable. Again, it's not like soft, like you would want to lounge in all the time. There is some, a little bit of inflexibility there, but in terms of like the actual maneuverability once it's on your body, it's great. Like I'm not gonna lounge in this, but in terms of like snowboarding and skiing and you know moving and contorting in my body, I was never like restricted. I was able to get every motion that I needed to. It was comfortable when you know doing squats and doing all those sort of things where I didn't feel like I was being restricted in my motion. So the, the flexible material is good. It's not just waterproof or water resistant. It's just stretchy and it, it has like all those characteristics that make it nice. The flexibility of this also is what makes it cool because it wears sort of like a sweatshirt. And again, with the 55 weather, that's like t-shirt weather. I didn't really want to take it off just in case I, I just got my boots retuned. And if I ate crap, I didn't want to be all you know, wet and snowy, especially after a rain. So wearing this was important. But the thing is the elasticized cuffs were really, really flexible. It was easy to pull up my forearm and they stayed, which was the, the coolest part is I wore it basically like, just like a sweater with my, my sleeves up and I was able to get some extra wind so I wasn't overheating. Obviously the vents are there to help you with that as well, but just being able to easily push it up and just have a different look and get a little bit more skin exposure as you're going down just felt so comfortable. I didn't have to take the whole thing off and really risk crashing and getting soaked. Still had some protection and still was able to ride without being uncomfortable. That's what I really, really liked. Um, in terms of other features here, obviously the, the hood has a sort of a wind guard. So if you are stuck in snow showers or showers in general or rainfall even, um, you, you don't know, you saw a lot of people wear some neck gaiters. Not all of those are resistant. This will help with that, keep you a little bit warmer, keep you a little bit drier. And obviously with this, hood you can cinch it down really well they have elasticized cables here as well as really chunky fasteners really easy to use the biggest thing is that it's just a tight fitting hood like you're gonna have to stop and really like stretch it over your hood it's not the most swallowing thing that i've seen out there however it does give you just enough coverage where you can protect your helmet protect the holes and not get wet from that perspective um, and because it's so form-fitting and tight on there it's not going to fly off when you're going speedy down the mountain so that is an, a good thing about it, but we'll get into the negatives of this hood in uh, the later part of this. In terms of the color, again, perfect for spring skiing. This thing's 
color is technically a steel blue, but it really comes out kind of greenish. But on the mountain, it looks super awesome when the sun hits it. It's just a really interesting color, versatile for both dark and light pants. So this is probably my favorite color that they have. Um, obviously, the designs are different depending on what you're looking for. I personally like something a little bit more simplistic. You can go for whatever you need. And then the other, the other thing that was really cool was this big swallowing kangaroo pocket. This was nice because I was using an X3 Insta360 cam and sometimes I didn't want to get the shot. Sometimes I wanted to focus on my ride and you know, instead of pulling on my backpack, it was nice that the selfie stick and the camera fit in the length of this, uh, this kangaroo pocket. So it was just easy access because sometimes I wanted to, like for the times I really wanted to focus, I would put it on my backpack, but sometimes I didn't know if I wanted to get the shot or not, I would just stick it in here. It wasn't too bad. Again, sometimes there are certain restrictions and we'll talk about it later in the video, but overall very easy to just shove it in there. It's a really great storage pocket. Like, you know, if you want to just put your gloves in there because it's too hot, you want to put like goggle uh, sock in there. Like you have some space. There's a decent amount of space to throw stuff in. The other good thing in there is that that, that compression sleeve is awesome for like holding keys, a pass, like cards that you might want to use for um, you know, food and stuff like that. So that compression sleeve just keeps it more close to the body so it's not jingling around in the, all that space that you have. It's also really good for your phone because it's stretchy, like most phones can fit in here. And they're, you know, if you're old school, they even have like a, a wired connection uh, slot for headphones if you wanna wire that through your arms and have it there. So very, very nice. There are some considerations when using this pocket we'll talk about later, but overall very, very easy to use, awesomely large um, and yeah. It's held up through rain and sunshine, so super impressed. But let's talk about some things that probably need some improvement. I'll just stay here for a sec. It's like all right. it's not, it's not bad. So this jacket is all right, but all the skin exposed is rough. I mean, it's not, oh, the wind. No, this is terrible for wind. <laughs> okay, so this is second day and I'm injured, so I didn't ride today. Nice, you're doing great. Don't. Yeah, I'm good. Oh. Let's see this. But she did, and she did well, I think. I wasn't there, but she dealt with ice. First day, she's doing great. He couldn't keep up with me. Get the... Anyway, <laughs> this is a good time to talk about this, the kind of the negatives of this jacket. Today was a lot colder than yesterday. Yesterday was amazing like in the 30s, super sunny, soft snow, great. Today, icier? Definitely icier. And more like the low 20s. This jacket is pretty thin. It is fleece lined, but it definitely would not be good for this weather. Just walking around and even like just getting out there a little bit while she was doing her runs, it was freezing. And yes, you could layer this by putting a mid layer. I'm wearing a base layer and a sweater right now, but you know, you could have a more complicated mid layer but I still think that you'd be cold. And like, I, I don't know, the, the slim fit of this jacket doesn't really make it easy to layer on without starting to feel like the Michelin man and then your mobility being affected as a result. So just the thinness might not work for your riding conditions depending where you are, especially if you're in the Northeast and you have to deal with really cold things. So like if you're starting to talk about like 20s or teens, you're probably gonna need a more elaborate jacket. 
The other thing that was a problem with this one was that the pocket access was a little bit limited. They do have this giant kangaroo pocket and I showed you guys what was great about it. However, while it can fit a lot and there is a compression spot, it's just in a really weird spot where if you're doing a little more technical riding or more aggressive riding, when you're squatting down, you're going to feel whatever's in your pocket. So if you're a minimalist rider and don't have a backpack to put your stuff in, your phone is gonna like hit you. And that's what I kind of felt towards the end when I just wanted to have my phone more free access. And that was a little bit of a problem. And I don't think you're gonna have as much issue if you're snowboarding, but definitely with skiing because you're doing squats so much and things like that, especially if you're doing something like moguls or like different terrain, definitely gonna affect you and you're gonna feel that in your pocket. The other thing is that because this is so slim fitting, as well as there's not any sort of like chest pockets, just access to other things. Like if you have like a lens or your phone again, access to other pockets is just not there. And if you need to, to access something, like if you're wearing a bib that has like a center pocket, you literally have to strip. I'll show you how hard this thing is to take off just to really emphasize how difficult it is. But I, I felt like I was flashing people. I wasn't really flashing people, but just the whole aspect of it was a little bit cumbersome just to get things from my bib. Again, if you're just using regular pants, you're not gonna have that issue. But I, I tend to like to leave my pants open just so like there's that space for my, my thighs to move around. I don't like having phones and keys and things like that. And then I think lastly, the, the big thing for me was that this isn't really helmet compliant. Um, it's really tight on the hood. So it's good if you're just like wearing it casually. But for me, I always am a big proponent of wearing a helmet because, you know, especially if you're doing something a little bit more intense, you need that protection. I know some of the people ride warmer conditions and people don't like wearing helmets. So this is probably good for you guys. But for my personal need, I need that helmet and just I tried so many different ways to get this thing to fit on it. It just really wasn't convenient. So I'll show you guys a little bit of a clip of how that plays out. In summary, the Yeti snow jacket is great for those individuals looking for something a little bit more lightweight, flexible, you know, no frills and hassles. Like people that really just don't need that extra insulation for warmth. They don't need a ton of pockets. They are a minimalist rider that really just likes nothing you know, it's just little things on with the mountain with them. I think this is great because it's stylish. It has that flexibility to move around without restriction. And it does the baseline things that a jacket needs to do in terms of protecting you from the wind and showers and things like that when the weathers do turn south. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that it does have a pass pocket sleeve, which is great for mountains that have readers that can penetrate clothing. So again, you don't have to take the pass out. Very easy to access if you need to, um, but it's just something that's a nice convenience. Again, it's probably not great for people who are doing much colder weather, like 20 and below, 25 and below. Just the wind can penetrate the jacket at those temperatures, and it's just extremely uncomfortable and layering it. You could do a mid layer, as I mentioned before, it's just not the best in terms of layering because it is a tighter fit so that, it, you know, it, it's snug to the body and you can move around with it. But if you're putting like multiple mid layers in there, you're going to feel very bulky and it'll just won't feel very comfortable as you're going down the mountain. That's the biggest flaw that I would say from this jacket is just it's just not designed for like really cold north east snow conditions um, but if you're you know a west coast rider or you know you're getting more spring skiing in this is perfect jacket i love it it's something that i can easily recommend at 169 dollars it's not a tremendous hit on the bank and i would say because we're at the end of the season definitely look out for discounts because they do discount their last year's models as they introduce new options. So if there's a jacket that you liked and maybe did not pick up because you already had a jacket, but maybe you want to consider something or you, you know you're going to do more warmer skiing in the future, maybe look for this season's to get discounted. I think it, they discount anywhere from like 20 to 40 bucks depending on the model. So definitely check Dope Snow out for that. But I do appreciate you guys sticking around with this review. I know I try to get at least one ski re review out there every year because I've been trying to go out there more. But we'll be transitioning back into technology and getting out back on the field workouts. So hope you guys are ready for that because I'm starting to get a little bit more free time with one of my projects closing up. So I'm hoping to get back to my normal schedule of videos, live streams, and all that so I can interact with you guys a lot more. But as always, if you liked the video, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, do all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love, and I'll see you shortly. Peace.